It is that unforgettable picture of the beloved master saying, Oh, how I long, even if on foot in the utmost poverty, to walk through every mountain and valley, to all the places in your countries, and crying aloud the greatest name to awaken the souls everywhere. Alas, he said, I cannot do it. But please, God, ye will achieve it. And the blessed beauty, Baha'u'llah, supreme redeemer of men, organizer of the entire planet, promise of all ages, king of kings and lord of hosts, said tenderly, Oh, how I long to announce unto every spot on the surface of the earth and to carry to each one of its cities the glad tidings of this revelation. Baha'u'llah in the epistle to the son of the wolf says even more tenderly that he longs to lay his face against the ground on every spot of the earth. For perhaps that will be the spot where the footsteps uh, one of his loved ones has passed. I am speaking on behalf of all my fellow hands, the remnants of the beloved guardian, and would like to share once again from our wonderful writings the staggering, fantastic spiritual power you hold in the palms of your hands. Shoghi Effendi says, Today, the need is so great on the part of humanity to hear of the divine message that the believers must plunge into the work wherever and however they can, heedless of their own shortcomings. He says that we must have a perfect reliance upon God and let our hearts burn with the desire to serve his mission and proclaim his call. And then he promises you will observe how eloquence and the power to change human hearts will come as a matter of course. From on high, you just have to report for duty with a pure heart and say, Baha'u'llah, here I am, use me, and the power will come pouring down. You know, when I was on pilgrimage, the beloved guardian said our faith was a faith of superlatives. That's why we say the greatest name, the most great peace, the greatest holy leaf, the most great prison, all superlatives. And that's the best we can do. Language is too weak to try to express the majesty, greatness and wonder of this cause of ours. When I was a young man, I came to this mountain of God and entered the presence of the beloved guardian. And the world became another world. And everything I saw except him became ashes. And before I left my pilgrimage, I, I know I've told some of you, I wanted to go up to the archives building and get Mullah Hussein's sword, get on a white horse and ride out shouting, Ya Sahib Zaman, and conquer the world for him and bring in that vast number of new believers he longed to see. Now, I am an old man, and I still haven't done it. I mean, the world throbs with the vibrations, and the very soul feels shivers of awe and a stab-like thrill of delight to say, I am a Baha'i, and to know that pouring down upon you whatever task you have are the powers and blessings and infinite infallibility of the Bab, Baha'u'llah, Abdul Baha, Shoghi Effendi, and our supreme universal house of justice. The mere act of arising will win for you God's help and blessing. The mere act of arising, no matter what you were, what your background is, you just arise. And the capacity to do whatever it is you want to do and has to be done will come. This is what he says. We are filled with feelings of unworthiness and dismay. And we would be truly disheartened, but for the comforting thought that if we rise to play nobly our part, every deficiency, every deficiency in our lives will be more than compensated for by the all-conquering spirit of his grace and power. 
not half of your deficiencies or some of your deficiencies and our deficiencies, all of them. But again, we have to arise nobly to play our part. He says the very act of striving to serve, however unworthy we may feel, attracts the blessings of God and enable us to become worthy, more fitted for the task. Isn't that a tremendous thing? Never before in the religious history of the world, in our faith, it is the service itself that is the capacity. If you arise to serve, the capacity will come to win those victories. If we arise, Shoghi Effendi says, in the advent of divine justice, the most puny and insignificant among the followers of Baha'u'llah can accomplish such wonders and would dwarf, as would dwarf the mightiest achievements of even Peter, the first apostle of Jesus the Christ and founder of his church. The poor, the illiterate, the uneducated, the peoples in the village, with those pure hearts, if they respond, they will do things greater than the first apostle of Christ. Universal House of Justice urges us to continue to do all in our power to help rescue these wonderful heroes and heroines of God, leave no opportunity unexplored, fight for them like lions. But then the Universal House of Justice does point out one danger of the crisis if we want to fully seize the opportunity of the other. Never, they said, never let preoccupation with the Iranian crises come at the expense of neglecting this land and its goals, which would divert the Baha'i world community from achieving the very success that is necessary for strengthening the faith and confounding those enemies and bringing greater possible help to our martyrs everywhere. Nothing less, the House of Justice says, is worthy of the sacrifice of our great precious martyrs. Unless we arise, we arise with a mighty roar of determination and open the doors to this desperately needed vast increase in the number of new believers, we shall have failed these heroes and heroines of God who have given their life, their all. Of course, what we've done is wonderful. Don't mistake my words or theirs. It's wonderful and helpful. But beloved friends, if we do not bring in the flood of new believers in that climate they have changed for us, we will have made a mockery of their sacrifice. Don't worry about them. They've won their victory. They're already in the arms of their beloved master and their beloved guardian and the blessed beauty. They've won their victory, and we haven't won ours.